or Explorers Anchorage, right next to the supermassive black hole, relatively speaking. Uh, there is where we started, roughly, and now it's off to Beagle Point. No more uh, stations out here. There might be like an asteroid, like a small asteroid base or something here or there. We're not going to go to any of those. We're going straight to Beagle Point. Right about here is the Abyss. The Abyss is an area of where star density well, takes a shit. Plotting routes becomes more dangerous and more difficult to do. I'm not too worried about it because I've crossed it several times, including uh, in a, this exact Ass Explorer build. So I do know that I can cross the Abyss without once having to jump to a non scoopable star. Some of these stars around here I have actually discovered that should have my name on them. And uh, this is a lot farther than this these distances were. You can think of it as maybe I'm like a third of the way to Beagle Point. So where are we gonna go to first? I don't think we can plot all the way to Beagle Point, but maybe halfway or maybe a little farther than halfway. All right guys, which one of these stars is Raxla? Point it out, pick it out for me. 18,000 light years. That's, I think we can plot as far as 20,000, but it still should push this plot. Nope, nope, hey. 18,000 is just a little too much. So let's cut it back a bit. <laughs> Stop trying. Okay. So um, part of the problem is not just the distance. It's that we're in the galactic center. And, and the routing computer has trouble in the galactic center as well. Because the star density is so freaking high. So at first it has to deal with this load. And then also deal with the insane distance that I'm plotting. So let's actually just plot out of the galactic center first. This should not have any issue with this distance. Well, he better not be. There you go. Let's auto-launch. Yep, as I suspected, we're right up the slot's ass here, so I'm glad we auto-launched. Let's hope the routing computer retained the uh, filters that I asked it to retain. Well, this is awkward. Where the hell's the planet? Oh, there. We're going 150 jumps, about 5,000 light years. Just getting out of this extreme star density region. Here's our first jump to Beagle Point out of Explorer's Anchorage, guys. We have many, 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 many more to go. It's a jump for every original Pokemon minus Mew, guys, to get us out of this galactic center. Yeehaw. I just dropped out right there between these two stars. Not only that, I went through one star and ended out between them, facing the other one. I just pulled up, fuel scooped as normal, and rose away. Um, my heat was a little bit higher than normal, but I didn't take a single blip of damage to anything. My hole or anything else, my heat never even went to 100%. Here we are, we're jumping to the um, A-class star, I think. Yep, 13 light years away, we must be. Look at that bright boy. All right, good news, we got out of the galactic center, and we are now... Um, a decent ways into Riker's Hope. Let's see if I can plot that far. Let's just get to the to the entrance to the Fremordian frontier. Be very happy if I could plot this far here. It's 17,000 light years away. It's plottable in theory. I don't like that far, huh? Let's go halfway through, a little less than halfway through Newton's Vault and see if we can do this. Jesus, man. All right, we'll just go to this nebula, I guess. Fuck it. Truly, it can find the last couple jumps here. Permit is required for this location? Of course it is, guys. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Huh? Now what? Okay, let's go like five feet. Okay, can we go five feet? Let's just go to the very, very entrance of... Can't even go in there. Let's just go a small chunk of distance inside the region we're currently in. Apparently the docking computer is garbage. Yay. 107 jumps. It was able to plot 107 jumps. I'm so fucking impressed. Jesus, this is pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Well, here we go. Huh. Right after I had jumped between those two stars and didn't really have any problem, I got a message from one of my viewers pointing out that they had just jumped between two stars and were destroyed immediately. It hasn't happened to me, but I guess it's always possible. Tough out there for an explorer. We got sent all the way back. We're still going. We still have a lot of jumps left. Just this little bit right here on the way to Beagle Point. This is 107 jumps. And this is again where we started. Heavy Battle asks, I got a question that I've always wanted to ask passionate ED explorers. And please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to be hostile or arrogant in any way. More so, I'm looking for inspiration myself. 
What inspires you to go on these gigantic journeys? Eventually, isn't it true that all you find is a bunch of good-looking star systems with some weirdly shaped mountains on a planet at best? Is this enough for you, or do you believe there is something more out there, like a secret that the developers of the game left for someone to find? Well, thank you for your question, Mr. Heavy Battle. Yes, there are theories that the Frontier developers hid certain special things out here in the galaxy, namely Raxla. What that is, we don't even know. But yes, that's the uh, Holy Grail, the myth, the legend legend that explorers are looking for. Whether it exists or not, who knows. But it's not why I explore. Even if Raxla didn't exist, which it very possibly doesn't, even if the myth didn't exist, I would still explore like this. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start jumping <laughs> to get these uh, jumps down while I'm explaining this. The primary reason is I love space, and this is a way for me to experience it. The secondary reason is because of all, well, I mean, Look at my videos on my channel. All the crazy crap I end up doing. Elite Dangerous is a goal setting game. It's not one where an objective pops up on your screen and you follow it. You make your own goals, your own objectives, your own adventures. It's a sandbox kind of deal. And some people like that and get that, and some people don't. I found a good way to explain it to people by comparing it to speedrunning. Speedrunning in video games used to be an uncommon entity, but in recent years it's gained a lot of attention and popularity due to things such as Twitch and YouTube. Speedrunning is the art of completing a game, or a challenge within a game, as quickly as possible, and it takes an insane amount of skill and luck which equates to a large amount of time investment and tedium. And one could ask, why do you do that? just to see the number at the end of the screen that was a little bit lower than it was before? Is that really worth the months you invested? I feel like that's a very comparable question to why explorers explore so far in Elite Dangerous. Why go to Beagle Point 65,000-ish light years away? It's not just about the video game glory and internet points. It's the very process of challenging and pushing yourself. In speedrunning, you can gauge yourself by watching your best time drop lower and lower. In Elite Dangerous, you watch yourself progress across the scale replica of the galaxy. Galaxy. Look how far we've made it already. <laughs> now there could be Raxla on this planet. We don't know. There could be one of those holy grails because no one's ever been here before. No one's ever checked this planet out and it has a buddy with it. They're actually really close together from this perspective. Yeah, how close they are together. Damn. So there's something on here called stratum. I don't even know what the hell that is. Let's go find out what the hell stratum is. So we already found life, technically. We found bacteria and stratum. We're the first to discover this place, we're the first to map it, and now we're going to be the first to walk on it. All right, Raxla, where the hell are you? Whatever the hell stratum is, I'm not seeing any of it. Oh, wait, what's that? What the hell is that? The there we go. I'm going to go out my SRV first. Is there some of this crap right here? Stratum tectolitis. First footfall. Well, there we go, guys. Adventure. Right here. When I heard the word stratum, I was thinking of like a mesh of like mold or algae or something. A little too much detail. It looks like someone got sick. That's a bacterial colony. A primordial soup, if you will. Don't mind if I drive over you. Have you ever asked someone, why did you climb that mountain? And their response was, because it was there. Well, this mountain's here too. And I think I see a way up. <laughs> well, I wasn't really climbing a mountain as much as it was flying up one, but there we go. You can see more bacteria colonies over there. Oh, Jesus. I almost went right off the edge. Uh oh, uh oh, no, no, no. There's my ship down there. All right, we climbed the mountain, guys. Well, drove slash flew up the mountain, but... <gasps> Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right, I couldn't find Raxla. But, um, we climbed the mountain. I mean, that's cool. I'm sure there'll be Raxla next time, guys. I mean, there's only so many places it could be. A special thank you to my patrons that make these videos possible. The Geist Recruits, 84 Bandwagon, Dave Sunday, David Lissell, Phil Chammer, Joe Osborne, Joshua Meserve Jr., Critical Kiwi, Paul Calvin, Slave, and Texas T. And the Geist Cadets, 
Danny Taylor, Gaza Mildog, Hilo Mars, Mogbish, Ranger Danger, and Trocads, and the epic Geist Wing Commanders, Commander Roy Cookson, Commander Irish Love Circle, Glintwine, Pockets, Yuri Teraday, and ZZZZTXR, and my top patron a long time running, the Geist Staff Captain, Dafted124. Thank you, and until next time, cadets.